Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 29 and I'm going to discuss the electric properties of conductors. There are many videos previous to this which are relevant in one form or another and many of those are listed on the left hand side of your screen. The most important of which is number 28 where I discussed electrostatic energy. So let's begin. First of all we must define what a conductor and an insulator are. A conductor is a substance which has one or more free electrons per atom. So what this means is that there are some atoms in the substance who aren't designated to be confined to a particular atom. What this means is that they are free to move about the substance to conduct. An insulator, however, has no free electrons, which means every electron is designated to a particular atom and must stay there, which means that conduction is not possible. So the first property of a conductor is that inside the conductor the electric field is zero. Now why is this? Let's say that we have a conductor, let's say we had, I don't know, a spherical conductor, it doesn't really matter what it is, and let's say that there is some sort of an applied external electric field. Now the question is, what happens to the electric field inside the conductor? Well, we know that electric fields drive charges, so we know that positive charges and negative charges will be driven in different directions. So depending on the electric field, you're going to have charges moving one way or the other. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a buildup of charge. So let's say we're going to get a buildup, in this case, let's say we get a buildup of positive charge over here. And we might get a buildup of negative charge over here, whatever it is. But the point is that the, the charge will keep moving and keep building up and building up and building up. And the reason it's building up, of course, is because there is an applied electric field. And it will keep building up until its own induced electric field is able to counteract that of the, uh, the applied electric field. So what happens is your applied electric field induces the movement of charges. Themselves, they produce their own electric field. And this induced electric field is in the opposite direction of the applied field. And it will keep growing in magnitude until it is the same magnitude of the applied field and can therefore cancel it out. The beauty of this is the whole process is, excuse me, is almost instantaneous, which means that you will always have a flow, of a flow of charges in the material to create an induced electric field which will cancel the applied field, resulting in zero electric field inside your conductor. So like I said, inside a conductor, the electric field is always, is always zero. The next property is that inside a conductor, the sum of the charges is zero, or there is no net charge. Now we need to be careful here, I'm not saying that there is no charge. However, if you have one plus positive charge and one negative charge, you have, no ne you have no net charge. It's only when you have a surplus of positive or negative charges that you have a net charge. So what we're saying here is that there is no net charge inside a conductor. This comes from the differential form of Gauss's law. Because the differential form of Gauss's law says that the divergence of the electric field is rho over epsilon zero. But the previous property of conductors is that the electric field inside the conductor is zero. This means that rho over epsilon zero is also zero, meaning that the charge density is zero. And we know that the sum of the charge density is your, uh, is your total charge. So basically what we have is that uh, we have no net charge inside our conductor. Now the next thing, the next property is that net charge resides on the conductor's surface. So let's say that there is net charge somewhere in your, uh, in your conductor, it must reside on the surface. And the reason that is the case is we've just said that it cannot reside inside the, uh, the conductor itself. So the only place left for it to go is to be at the surface. So this might sound strange. You might think, for example, that the most um, economic way for a conductor to distribute its charge would be uniformly throughout. However, that just isn't the case. The net charge always resides on the conductor's surface. The next property I'd like to introduce is that a conductor is, equi uh, is an equipotential, or that the potential throughout the conductor is constant. So we know that the potential is minus the integral of e dot dl. Once again, we know that the electric field is zero inside the conductor. And because the electric field is zero inside the conductor, that means the change of potential is zero, 
or we have an equipotential. Now just, I suppose, to recap, because I think it's important that we understand this. If we have a conductor, and the conductor, let's say, has no net charge inside it, well, it yeah, can't have any net charge inside it, but I apply an electric field, so it's going to drive positive charge away from it, it's going to dr drive positive charge one way, excuse me, and negative charge in the other way. So we're going to have a buildup of charge, so let's say we have a buildup of charge, I don't know, it doesn't really matter where it is, we're going to have a buildup of charge, the charge will of course make its own electric field and it will keep growing until it is strong enough to counteract the uh, applied field. And it's moving of course, in the, uh, excuse me, facing in the opposite direction, and as a result once it is of the same magnitude as the applied field, it cancels the applied field, and thus you have no, you have no electric field inside your conductor. The next and very important property is that the electric field is perpendicular to the conductor's surface, and this is immediately outside the conductor. So if you can imagine, say, a, a curved surface like this, it means that you need to come up with a normal at the surface to work out the direction of the electric field. Now you might ask yourself, well, why is that the case? Why is it always going to be normal? Well, let's say that there is, in fact, some so sort of a tangential component. So let's say it does something like this. There's some, some form of a tangential component. Well, the issue here is, is if there is a tangential component, it will be essentially the same as the induced electric field we spoke about, or excuse me, the applied electric field we spoke about a moment ago. It will induce the movement of charges, and those charges will move until their own induced electric field cancels out the tangential component. And as a result, you're only left with the normal component. So the point is that the electric field outside the conductor, immediately outside the conductor, is perpendicular to the uh, surface of the conductor. So I've been discussing induced charges quite a bit. So there's, we have a small bit more to do on that. So induced charges are basically the movement of internal charge in response to an external, uh, I, sh I should have said, I have written down an external charge, but I should say an external field here. So it's when the charge moves in response to an external field, or, yeah, an external field. So let's say, for example, we place a positive Q here. So the positive Q has its own electric field, and what it will do is it will drive the positive charge, in this case, to the right, a negative charge in this case to the left, or it will attract some of the negative charge towards the positive. So, of course, this is after um, you know there has been a movement of charge inside, and we have a, we have these induced charges. So let's say, for example, inside of our conductor, we put it in a cavity, and inside the cavity, what we do is we place a charge. So if you can imagine, I just put a cavity in here. And I place a charge inside the cavity of plus Q. I'm going to tell you that the electric field inside the cavity is non-zero. And it's only non-zero when there is charge inside the cavity. We'll see in a moment if the cavity is empty or has a, it has a, a zero net charge, well then there is no electric field in it. But what happens here is the following. Let's say we, we've placed a charge of plus Q inside the cavity. This charge is electrically isolated from its from the surroundings or from the outside, because we know an electric field cannot penetrate through the, uh, we'll say the center or the the thickness of your conductor, which means say if we put a detector out here. Excuse me, that's pretty terrible. If we put a detector out here, let's say I'm observing something, it means that any electric field cannot penetrate through here. It just can't do it because the conductor do won't allow your uh, electric field to penetrate. But what happens instead is we get induced charges. So we get the, uh, the, the positive charge inside the cavity will attract some negative charge on the cavity wall. And this itself will result in some positive charge being placed or induced on the outside or surface of your, your, um, your conductor. And of course, this positive charge on the outside of your conductor can be detected. So what's, ab what's able to happen is that you're, although you're electrically isolated, the presence of the charge inside the cavity can be observed or detected from the outside. So next, if we have, an, we have a cavity again, and this time we put, once more, we put a positive charge of plus Q inside. And this attracts 
it, it induces some negative charge on the inside of the cavity. Now just before we continue, just note by the way that these are induced charges and they're coming to another surface because the surface or the, the wall of your cavity is essentially another surface inside your, uh, inside your conductor. What will happen is, and we'll see this in a moment, that the induced charge on the surface of the cavity wall is equal in magnitude but opposite in uh, charge to the, uh, to, to the charge inside the cavity and the induced charges on the surface of the conductor as a whole would be also equal, equal in magnitude and equal in, in uh, parity, I suppose, to the actual charge inside the cavity. So just to see this, let's use Gauss's law for electric fields. So we define a Gaussian surface which is completely inside the conductor and does not penetrate the cavity itself. So we know that the closed surface integral of E dot dl is going to be equal to zero. And this is because the electric field inside the conductor must be zero. This also means that the sum of the charge inside the, ca excuse me, inside the conductor must be zero. What this implies, this sum of the charge must be zero, implies that we have plus Q, um, we'll say inside the cavity, we have minus Q on, uh, induced onto the cavity wall, and we have plus Q induced onto the surface of the uh, conductor as a whole. Now where is this used? It's used when we talk about Faraday cages. Because if you have the uh, if you have the net charge inside your cavity of zero, then there is no electric field inside your cavity. So when there's no electric field inside your cavity, then you can have no movement of charge and therefore you cannot get electrocuted. So for example, during um, during a, a lightning storm, it might be a good idea in fact to get into your car because you, everything inside there will be neutral in terms of the amount of uh, the net charge and as a result you cannot have an electric field inside there to a good approximation and as a result you won't be able to get electrocuted even if uh, lightning does strike because most likely the, uh, the the lightning will not be allowed to go through your car because it's uh, the electric field is not allowed but of course I, would, I wouldn't go trying that because it does have windows and that's exactly how your uh, phone and uh, radio signal get in. So that's all I've got to say about that for the moment. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.